Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I will explain the steps now one by one. Okay, here this is the overall summary of the uh, homology modeling technique. First one we see here this is the structure we need, we need. So, we have the two sequences. So, identify the template right we check the alignment and get the template. Once we get the template then go with the alignment corrections right here with the this is alignment right and you check the alignment and see so, so that there will be less gaps in the alignment. Once we have the alignment correction, then we generate the backbones, right? Because you take the same uh, backbone and get the backbone, and then when the backbone is set, then look for the loops. Okay, here as you can see several loops here, and model these loops, right? When the loops are done, then go with the side chains. There are several uh, libraries you can check the side chains, and when we model the side chain, then finally optimize the model, right? You can also try to use Molecular Dynamic Simulations to see whether there is any uh, fluctuations in these amino acid residues and finally, we validate your model. If you are happy with the model and it satisfies the requirements then it is fine. If not you have to iterate again and again with the different steps we change the loops and you change the template or change the side chain right and finally, see whether uh, the model is uh, valid or not. First we need to take the template. How to get the templates? You check with the blast, your sequence you give and run blast and finally, you will get lot of hits with the different identities. So, your accuracy of the model depends on the template and again it is very important to select identify the best template. If you get several hits with high sequence identity, what other criteria you use? you can see the sequence coverage and you can see the less number of gaps and see whether the proteins belong to similar families right and all the aspects you need to consider right and second is see if these proteins have some similar folds and the regions are properly aligned. So, all these things you need to consider before you select the template. Then the second one you look at these different proteins and see the important residues whether the residues are the same in these two different proteins. Then based on all these aspects then you can choose a template because it is very important to choose the template otherwise you end up with the wrong structure. So, now if you see the structures are known because you search your uh, query with the known structures. So, then we get some structural guidelines with the templates you will get different uh, structural information because the PDB is known and see whether you can see the family of the proteins, how about the structurally conserved regions and then if you see all these informations then you can choose the template. How do you check the conserved regions? Because these regions what are the conserved regions? And the protein they have the nearly identical structures right because the conserved regions they have the uh, identical structures and there might be the interior core and mostly they contains alpha helix and beta strands. So, look into these details right and also location of these residues right in the conserved regions because we know the structures right you need to take into consideration all these aspects. Then we use the biological information and the known functional annotation because in several databases you can see the residues different functions right other active sites or motifs and so on and using all these information finally, you can choose the template. Usually what we do? You take a sequence and just paste the sequence in Swiss model or any software you will get the structure. So, the, pro the question is whether you get the relevant structure or not. So, if you spend some time right in each steps then you can confident that you get the good structures. The most important one is a template you need to give proper template for the modeling in that case you can get at least more than 60 percent confident that you can get the relevant structure. So, these are the this the method we use for the taking uh, the template you use the blast and then you use the known structure database right 
and finally, you get the structures from the PDB right this is fine ok. Now, what to do you get the templates right you have your uh, query sequence and you get the templates you look you check the literature and other information finally, you decided that ok this is your template ok. Then if you see the alignment is correct or not for example, if you see an alignment right alanine is mutated to uh, glutamic acid. So, you can align any residue you can mutate any residues that is possible, but this is reliable or not right if it is alanine is the buried region and we convert the mutated to glutamic acid this is what unlikely happen because it will destabilize the protein right because alanine is a heterophobic residue this is heterophobic core and if you convert uh, mutate alanine to glutamic acid what will happen destabilize right because it is a charged residue right it will destabilize the protein. So, this, this is less possible to have this type of alignment in this case the alignment you need to change so, introduce a gap or uh, right and you can make these residues not aligned you have to align properly. Then you can use a multiple sequence alignment and see that conserved residues and your template whether the conserved residues are properly aligned or not if it is not properly aligned you have to make the correction. So, that it is properly aligned. Then you can see the template and see whether the core residues which are less likely to be changed because these are the very important residues right then the residues are the outside of the protein. Then also you can see the insertion deletions and the gaps right you have to make the gaps as less as possible because if you introduce more number of gaps it is less possible right in this case you check that the gaps should be as small as possible. Okay, I will show an uh, example right here you can see a template structure this in green ok this is the green one ok this is the uh, template structure. So, we aligned with two types of structures right one is you can see in uh, red and one is in blue you would see the red one ok this aligned here this is the red and here this is up to here and this is the gap ok here this is the large gap if you use the red one and there is another one you can make the corrections using the blue line you can see the blue is up to here and again it goes from here and this is the gap this is the gap for the one alignment this is the gap for the second alignment in this case which one you have to choose the second one right in this case you can align with less gaps then if you now you have the template ready and you change the corrections alignment corrections and the alignment is also fine right now what is next step Build back backbone generation right because you have the sequence like for example, you have the sequence right and this is your query sequence and you have the template you get the template right for example, you have the template then if you see this one so the backbone is the same because if you draw this right the sequence you can get this one right n c alpha c n c alpha c n. So, here you have the hydrogen and this R group if you take the query sequence or the template the backbone is the same what is the difference reverse hydrogen for the take the first one you can this is a i and it goes on and second one a i r. So, back backbone is the same in this case you can just copy the backbone and and also if you see some cases the side chains are the same in this case you can also copy the side chains right this go you can generate the backbones ok see this is the backbone right of your template right the backbone of the template for your target you copy the same right now for your target right you just copy the backbone that is fine and here what do you do so, use the same backbone and here you can see some side chains what is the what is the symbol this side chain similar these side chains are the same between the template and the target. So, same amino acid residue for example, as I showed here this a and i they are same. So, this case you can just copy the side chains and then next is go with the loop modeling because this is the important step because the loops on the basis of the steric overlaps sometimes we have the small loops some we have the longer loops right if you take the helices and strands and the confirmation they are restricted right helices take some specific confirmation right what is the range in the Ramachandran plot something 
minus minus 50 yeah. minus in that range right you can see the confirmation restricted even the strands are restricted but the loop they can take any confirmation so in this case they are highly highly flexible it right, takes different confirmation so in this case you can see a specific degree of overlap right between these different loops loop, loop regions then you have to check the atoms right within the loops and see how these atoms fit in the protein okay i'll show an example so here this is the actual loop right if you take the template and your target you may see uh, the longer ones so you can see this region here the target you can see a longer loop than the one which are in the uh, your uh, template so in this case you need to model these loops replace these residues there are various options to loop the modeling either you can check the same residues in different protein structures which are all set up in the loop regions and then see you can uh, try to connect with that residues and finally you can make the corrections and energy minimizations and to make uh, the conformational changes so like this loop modeling is an important one because it's highly flexible right in this case you can uh, get the data from these known structures in loop regions and you can make these uh, loops right the conformation of this particular loops so now we have done the template made the alignment correction and we generated the backbone and we fit the loop regions but loop regions are not uh, highly uh, stable right but we made these loops right within this regular secondary structures now we have to change the side chains right if the sequence side rate is very high then it is mostly done for example if it is 90% right the 90% of this chain side chain we can al already generated and only 10 percent of this protein we need to generate side chain this is the reason why we require the high sequence uh, identity or similarity in this case almost the confirmation is almost fixed so the now for the rest of the protein why are the amino acids are different right then we need to replace the side chains we do the mutations and change the side chains in this case we need to check the confirmation confirmation of the side chain for example what makes the confirmation of the different uh, chains right so you the bond length you have the bond angle and torsion angles phi and psi right because that is mainly from the main chain and the chi angles so because if you go with the side chains right it is important to say the side chain confirmation so we look into the side chains many residues have more degrees of freedom right for example if you have this uh, alanine how many rotations are possible with the main chain you can see one CHT group so you can have rotations if you go for the serine or if you have the threonine you can see depending upon this atom the type right you can see different rotatable bonds so it can take different types of uh, takes different conformation right so in this case right, if you take this is a protein right here I show the tyrosine 22 it has various conformations you check the all possible conformations and then if you see the libraries and check the one which one is the most probable one based on the uh, uh, the type, type of the specific residue and where it is located so where it is in helix or where it is strand or whether it is a buried or exposed right you can see different confirmations and you can uh, add fix these confirmations for each side chains now we have the backbone and the side chains are the fixed if they are properly aligned with the same residues and if the residues are different then we mutate the residues right and you can build this model based on this uh, available data libraries so in this case this is very important because we need the libraries right because if you have the rotations how much degrees one can rotate 360 degrees you can rotate but if you do it different angles and different rotations it is completely very expensive because it search for different confirmations so for this case you check for the available libraries Right, there are several rotamer libraries available how the developed the libraries from the existing right from this distance and also from the known structures right if there is alanine or there is a valine or you can see what is the probable conformation each amino acid can adopt and also depending upon this neighboring residues or the three different residues so all these can these are probable libraries in this case if you find your residues right and different secondary structures and the different locations you can get the proper libraries from the rotamers and you can use that information confirmation to build your model otherwise if you do systematic sampling it takes long time 
and it is very expensive based on the computation time. So, we use the libraries and then see which conformation each side chain can adopt because each side chain can adopt only a small conformation right then all possible conformations. You can check with the environment and you can uh, use the particular conformation for any side chain. So, now if you look into this data available in the literature in homologous proteins mainly they retain the same rotomeric state and if you take the chi values for 80 percent of the identical and the 75 percent of the mutated residues they have same conformation right? they do not change much. So, if you look into this original structure template structure and the target structure the difference of the conformation is less right more than 70 percent of the residues they have similar conformations. So, now you have the so almost similar structures right? for example, if you have the template and you have the backbone and you have the side chain you have the loops. So, you have the crude model right now what we need to see during these steps we introduce several artifacts or the various artifacts we used we just replace several uh, amino acid residues for example, large side chains for small ones all in into valine right just we put it right whether they are sterically allowed or not that we do not know we have not checked. And the second one we take this some peptides from different reference proteins like loop modeling right if you do not get the proper uh, data we take from different different structures we do not check whether this is the similar proteins or different and, and the similar folds or not we take from different proteins. Then also we do not know the confirmation loops loops can take any confirmation right in this case we use whatever available in known structures. So, how to rectify this problem right we need to optimize it. So, in this case you can do the energy minimization right and see whether this protein or this model is chemically and conformationally reasonable or not. So, there are different methods available to minimize energies right and then use the energy minimization technique to see whether your protein is reasonably good energetically favorable or not. Then also we can see the MD dynamic simulations you see whether what are the possible conformations your protein can visit during different period of time right. This can also help to remove the large errors also it can have the low energy conformation. So, you can see this is the backbone and if you do the dynamics finally, you will get the stable three dimensional structure. So, once we develop a model it is a completely crude model you need to do energy minimization to see and get the energetically favorable structure and for more aspect if you do the MD simulations you can see what are the probable conformations each residue can make and whether it is possible to better conformation with lowest energy energy state. So, now if you model the structure and you optimized it and you got the structure now your structure is done right. Then the next question is whether this model is reliable or not then we do all the experiments we check the proper template and minimize the energy and you have done everything and whether finally, they are going to validate. How to validate this the first you see whether the bond length bond angles and torsion angles right all these stereochemical properties they are properly set or not. And the second one whether the specific important residues for actual active site residues or any uh, antigenic site residues. So, these residues have the proper conformation right if for actually figure the active site residues right they tend to interact with the other molecules you should have this some, some type of pockets and so on right you need to see whether all these things are correct or not and check the correct fold whether it is properly folded because if you see the sequences you can assign the fold and final structure is in proper fold or not. There are various methods available in the literature to validate the structure based on the stereochemical properties or based on the energy right and based on the external information right there are various methods available in the literature to validate whether your model is correct or not. So, here for example, I give an example for example, pro check or this what if this will check the stereochemical conformations for example, bond length bond angle torsion angles and the atomic contacts whether the proper contacts between different amino acids or not. Then second one is the Ramachan plot this is also one of the major com uh, components for evaluating your structure whether the structure uh, is mainly in the allowed region or not right. Once you do this it ensures that the backbone conformation of the model is normal normal because if the most of the residues are in the within the allowed region of the Ramachan plot then you can see that the backbone conformation is almost correct 
right. You can use several servers to get the model, but even then you have to check the and validate the specific models. So, if you see the Ramasan plot, then if you have the template and the query, you will get almost similar. Why it is similar? Because backbone is. Uh, because backbone we are just copying uh, from this template. So, in this case almost you can see the similar structures, but during the minimization it will be change the confirmation and finally, you need to check whether they are properly aligned. So, you can see this is a template gives a good structure and you can see most of this uh, the residues which are left side of the Ramachan plot for the alpha helices as well as for the beta strands. Then you check the specific residues for example, glycine or uh, because glycine has different conformation in Ramachan plot that I will show now and the proline the wire the proline are uh, located in the Ramachan plot. So, here this is the plot for the general case right where is this is this your serial alpha helix and you can see the beta strand here and some cases you can see the glycine this for the glycine right and here this for the proline. So, check whether the glycines or proline they are also right placed properly and they have the uh, conformational angles which can be seen from this Ramachan plot. So, this one example you get from the project right you get a structure and you submit your structure in the project server it will identify the bond length, bond angle and torsion angle and how many of them are within the limit. For example, if you see the bond length 19.1 percent are within the limit. So, these are bond angles you can see the 98.1 percent and the planar groups the 100 percent are within the limit. So, in this case the model is reasonably good right fine. Then see the Ramachandran plot you can see they are uh, used the allowed region right these are the allowed region and you can see the, the partially allowed regions. So, these are the fine around 98 percent which are in the allowed regions in this case uh, the model works fine. Now, I give you one example right as a case study. So, I have one sequence ok this is the tyrosine kinase protein C s kinase this is important for the uh, target as a colorectal cancer right. So, to develop a model right if first what you have to do have to find the template. So, what we have to do blast right first we blast. So, we will get different term, different uh, sequences of different identities say 90 percent, 98 percent, 72 percent are different identities. Then how to choose your template first you see the same family and you see the complete structure is known sometimes you get the uh, 98 percent sequence identity, but the structure is not complete you have only the partial structure. So, you should get have the complete structure for this the PDB. Sequence wise align, align and tell it is 98 percent right, but if you see the structure we have only partial structure. So, you need to make sure that the complete structure is available. So, in this case if you have the human kinase we choose the two SRC they belong to the same kinase family and the this is CS kinase and here you can see this SRC kinase and then look at the resolution what is the resolution of the template you choose right there should be a high resolution right not the lower resolution structures. So, it is 1.5 angstrom so it is fine. And another aspect is even if you get less identical templates, you see the structurally similar or not, right? That also possible. For example, if you have these uh, binding sites, so sites are properly aligned. That regions are properly aligned. Are there any specific motifs? So see that specific motifs that they are properly aligned. That they also even the sequence identity is less. You can choose the structures. In this case, your structure will be similar, resemble the functionally important regions that is also possible fine. So, if you take this structure that right here this has the identity of 84 percent right of the positive is 92 percent right here yeah this is similarity and there is no gap because all residues are properly aligned and we have the complete structure. So, with 84 percent sequence identity and you can treat this as your template. When you make a template then finally, model the structure right like the uh, loop modeling and you can use the uh, backbone generation and the side chain uh, modeling right. Finally, you get the energy minimization structure this is a structure you can see the blue one ok this is for the C s kinase and the gray one this is called SRC kinase and the RMS is around 1 angstrom. So, it is a reasonably good, good structure you can get this one. Then we validate our model this is one of the examples you can do with the Ramachan plot you can see the dots right which are mainly in the alpha helices and in the beta strands. And we see about 80, 90 percent of these residues are the allowed region 
and about 9 percent are in the uh, partially allowed region right. In this case you can see the model is reasonably good and you can trust this model for the other applications. So, here the sequence rate is very high. So, you can see the RMS is 1 angstrom. In this case we can also use this for understanding the different size as well as use this model for identifying the lead compounds in structure based neck design. It is possible because it gives similarly high resolution structure similar to the uh, structures which you can obtain from experiments. So, these are the different servers for homology modeling that you can uh, use Swiss model or the uh, what if different servers you can do it and here this is the one of the widely used uh, tools like modeler is a various options to do that. So, you can uh, uh, download this software you can install the software and you can get the uh, structures using homology modeling. So, now we did this homology modeling if you do not have any sequence identity then what we have to do we have to do from this scratch right in this case we have any sequence you can get the structure but we need to do from the sequence based on physical principles what are the bond length bond angle torsion angle and what types of interactions it can make 1 4 interactions 1 5 interactions right different types of intervals interactions right do all these things it is time demanding because computationally expensive why is computationally expensive because we need to uh, do from the scratch and it is mainly based on the physical models right we need to calculate the energy and we need to fix the different positions for each atom right there are, we have to do lot of confirmation sampling so it takes lot of time to get a, get a structure and this is the reason the abinitial prediction we can use only for small proteins for example less than 100 pro, 100 residues if it is very high proteins because it is very difficult to do all the minimization in this case what they do so they cut into pieces based on the domain information and model the proteins for each domains and then they combine everything together and do the minimization for to get the final structure so because the knowledge based approach it may fail because the homologous structures are not available and if there is new folds because they look for this similar folds right to do this knowledge based approach so rosetta is one of the widely used methods for the abinitio uh, modeling right so what they do they start from the beginning and currently they implemented the homology modeling along with abinitio right they take the some fragments right based on the local sequence preference and you can see so the library of the fragments for the different cases and they think that these have the native like globular properties then they combine all these things together from the populations and for the small for the unknown cases they do the modeling and then finally they generate the model and finally go with the different uh, the possible structures and select the best one this is how they use even iit madras iit delhi professor jaram developed a server called bahirat that is also based on the abinitio modeling technique there is also have reasonably good accuracy if the residues are less than 100 residues the protein is smaller in size so there is another method that is called the threading or the fold recognition in this case you can see the best fit between the sequence and template for example if you have a sequence from the sequence we can derive some uh, information we have a energy function and see how this can fit with the structures this is a kind of 1d to 3d alignment so what to do we first get the energy function that is very important that is really difficult step and template libraries you can see the different structures available in protein data bank you make a libraries and see which energy function fits with which type of proteins right and then align the sequence with the template using score the score they depend on the statistical potentials how far the residues are close to each other or what is the environment based on physical chemical properties and how about the gap based on that they develop energy functions and they compare right this is the kind of 1d to 3d alignment once the fold is set then they can use the homology modeling and the energy uh, minimization to refine the structure how to do this for example this is a target sequence right and these are the different templates first you take the energy function right to align the uh, sequences with the structures and then they look for the goodness of it which one will fit with the different templates and align based on the ranks and finally they get the best one based on the rank how to use this scoring function okay they this is a sequence 
they use three different aspects. One is what is the probability that two residues are in contact. For example, if you know the sequence, what are two residues which have high possibility that they are in contact with each other. For example, this uh, lysine and another aspartic acid they can be uh, close to each other. For example, this and this can be close to each other or this uh, leucine and this tyrosine can be close to each other. Then see the structures and they have the scoring function and the second one they see how well they fit with the structure environment. They see the physical chemical properties of amino acids right in the sequence and different secondary structures right and why and the solvent accessibility whether they are buried or exposed and look into the structures whether it is buried or exposed or same secondary structures and based on that they can define the function. Then see the gaps giving the gap penalty. So, considering these three aspects they get this uh, total energy this is the one is the probability of the potential and this is the structure environment and the gap and they combine everything and map. If you have this sequence this would have the energy, energy function of this much values. So, then take all the templates then which one has the best one then check all these aspects and rank the models and check okay, for this sequence this could be the probable model. This is a kind of only 3D model right get the sequence and then find the structure this is called the protein threading based on uh, uh, this fold recognition. So, we discussed about three different types of uh, modeling techniques what are three different types of modeling techniques? Homology modeling, homology modeling ab, ab initio and fold, and fold recognition right. So, now there is a competition called the CASP right the critical assessment of uh, structure prediction. So, they conduct once in two years right. So, what they do? So, they get the experimental structures from the crystallographers or the from NMR spectroscopy before publishing this in the PDB they keep the structures and give the sequences open to competition. So, you can register and you can try to develop models or you can use a different meta servers. So, there are meta servers available there you can uh, get the models with the different models you can choose which are which among the 50 models which are the best 10 right you can use that. So, then you submit your model and they evaluate and once the structure is known they can compare because yesterday we discussed about the alignment of structures. So, they use the alignment and see the structurally conserved regions right and then see how far your model can fit with the known structures and accordingly they will tell you okay you are under this category this this uh, method works fine with less RMSD right. They give different types of proteins with simple proteins or complex structures and so on right. Then you can also evaluate okay which method fits very well with which type of these sequences. For example, your sequence identity is high we expect the homology model work fine and if other cases of initial can work some can do well with the fold recognition and so on right. So, this is the blind prediction uh, method anybody can uh, register and uh, work on that right and maybe you can also try maybe next year we have the competition. So, see whether your method can predict right the structures right fine with these other available uh, uh, existing methods right. Summarizing what we discussed today. Structure prediction. Yeah, mainly with the predicting 3D structures from sequence. What is the name of the problem? Uh, protein, protein folding protein. problem because comparing the sequences and structures, right? Known sequences are around 700 to 800 fold compared to the structures. So, it is very important to build a model, right? Also, structures are important to understand the function. So, then we discussed about the different types of modeling, right? If you the homology modeling, we need to think about the see the uh, coverage plus the sequence identity and then you can choose the template template is very important and then do the alignment corrections and then do the backbone generation loop modeling and side chain modeling and finally optimize your model and validate right and finally if you are happy you should uh, obey the all the rules mainly stereochemical properties and the energies and then we discuss about the fold recognition that is 1D 3D uh, alignment from the energy functions you can check identify what are the uh, structures which can fit with your sequence. Then we discussed about the ab initio so based on the physical uh, energy functions right. If the homology modeling or the fold recognition uh, fails then it is very important to do this ab initio. So, you can do with this ab initio structure prediction. In the next classes I will discuss about some of the applications mainly how the parameters we derive from the sequence and structures can be used for understanding the protein folding rates 
or protein stability or the protein interactions right and the structure based drug design and so on. Thank you for your kind attention.